Okay guys, I'm back in Genshin Impact So there is a new Framine event Right here I thought it was just a normal event but there's a story on it so Might as well do a video on it again Water Imp's Conjecture So it's the fishing girl uh, The one where I get the fight weapon <laughs> Alright, let's see what this is about. at all. Hmm. Hmm, that can't be right. Oh, yeah, got voices more. They're right. real after all. No, that can't be. Mm. But what if there's a chance? Greetings, Miss. Is there something that's bothering you? Oh, no, it's nothing. I'm Della Roche, the representative of the Fontaine Fishing Association. How can I help you? Oh, so you're adventurers. Oh, finally. Someone has heard my prayers. Paimon can tell you were really bothered by something. Don't worry, you've got two super experienced I'm adventurers really right actually. here. <laughs> we'll take care of anything and everything for you as long as you pay us a little bit of aura. Oh, you are exactly the helpers I need. See, the problem is that the fish around the fishing spot at Arrhenius have just all up oh, and that's what's going recently. On. No wonder you cannot fish just now. They disappeared too quickly for it to have been the work of human anglers. As the representative of the fishing association, I had planned to go and investigate the area right away. <clears throat> right, but unfortunately, as the representative of the fishing association, there are a few other errands that I absolutely okay. have to run. So, so you'd like us to investigate the spot for you? Exactly, you're right on the Mora. So I thought I could delegate this work to you. Are you two some kind of prophets, knowing exactly what I was going to say like that? Or maybe like the oracles you read about in fairy tales? Yeah, we're just really experienced in this kind of thing, that's all. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear it. I'll get a good night's sleep knowing the two of you are on the case. But don't we just need to investigate the missing fish? It really doesn't sound too difficult. No, you mustn't let your guard down. As the representative of the fishing association, I have good reason to believe that the fish have gone missing due to an encounter with the water imps. Yes, you're both outlanders, right? Our local fairy tales often speak of a terrifying Del underwater creature called Delxi. Delxi, okay. The story our parents would tell us was always the same. If we went to the water alone, then we'd be snatched away and eaten by a water imp called Thuxy. A child eating water imp? Hmm. Did they tell you what it looked like? My father would always describe it as a beautiful, multicolored snake woman, while my mother said it had a handsome face. It's really strange, though, because you'd also hear other people describe oh. it as just a chubby penguin with a deceptive appearance. Chubby penguin? Okay. It's Remini's uh, penguin buddy. Even though the tales vary regarding its appearance, everyone agrees that it's really dangerous. It lives in an underwater cave surrounded by pallid bones and uses its sensitive nose to track down lonely children who've lost their way. And once it finds a child, it uses its Doesn't sound like singing it, voice to lure them into the water before swallowing them all. Pretty terrifying, isn't it? I... Sounds kind of scary, but isn't that pretty normal for a fairy tale? After all, those kinds of stories are usually made up to help keep children away from danger. But what if the fairy tale was inspired by a real-life tale, just like how a water vein always has a source? Well, I wouldn't call it evidence per se, but I've heard some rumors lately. They say that someone recently saw a child walk into the water as if he was possessed by something Mm. Doesn't that sound just like he was responding to the call of a water imp? So you mean someone really got eaten by a water imp? 
it's all hearsay, so it's hard to confirm. But still, they all say this happened on Irenaeus. That's no laughing matter if you ask me. Both the Opera House and the Fountain of Lucene were built there, and the sources of many water veins can be traced to the island as well. Combine that with the mysterious mist, the huge tree with expansive underground roots, and the rumor that the bishops on the island can understand human language. Is it really so shocking that an island so shrouded in mystery could harbor a terrifying water imp as well? Oh, why does Paimon feel like you're pulling our leg? You're just piling on the rumors now. Oh, still, if someone's really been hurt, then we can't just ignore the situation, right, Traveler? Oh, marvelous. Then I'll just mark the stretch of water on your map. Don't forget that no matter what, safety always comes first. Okay. Interesting. What the imp, huh? Okay, back to the normal dialogue. So... Can I... Shit, not enough. Never mind. <laughs> Okay, anyway. Good thing I already opened the map. <coughs> I still haven't opened this thing. I can open, hold on. Oh, I missed one key. Okay, never mind. I'll come back later then. Is this the stretch of water Dilla was talking about? It looks really peaceful. Oh, it's for me. Paimon? Traveler? It's for me with a uh, diving helmet. Uh, I'm sorry. I forgot I was still wearing this. Ruminate! <laughs> Paimon, are you okay? situations are probably unrelated. Okay. Sure, if that's in order. I know the name because of one of my employers. She noticed the clockwork penguins I brought to the workshop and contacted me through the shop's owner. She has commissioned me to make a special toy. Following her request, I've named the toy... It's a toy, Tauxi. Huh? But isn't it a little creepy to name a toy after a water imp? Uh, wait, hold on! from other people. Yeah, but, uh, she made a special request, but out of respect for her privacy, I can't really talk about it. It's alright, though. She'll be coming over to check on my progress shortly, and I'll just mm. tell her that you're two of my trustworthy companions. Hearing that, she might be willing to share some information, and you'll be able to continue with your investigation. Huh. Cold and reserved sometimes, you're still really considerate. Our target isn't necessarily the water imp, though. We're primarily here to investigate the disappearance of the fish. Yeah, I'm trying to fish here, I'm trying to get a weapon. <laughs> All the fish disappeared. The fish? Ah, uh, I 
think I may have connected the dots. These past few weeks, I've been taking Thelxy for underwater testing every day. The pressure testing makes a lot of noise. So, so all of that about fish the away fish, because of noise. Well, it was probably mm -hmm. because of me. So that's all it was? That actually makes, makes a lot of sense. Wait, so could that be the channel we heard about who walked into the water was also... Yes, it was just I him. think that's quite likely as Going well. In. <laughs> so in the end, it was just Ravenin! <laughs> Okay. I'm kind of imagining what a water imp from the fairy tales might look like, and it all turns out to be just a hoax. I'm sorry. It sounds like I've created a lot of trouble for everyone else as well. I'll try to finish this commission as soon as possible. Once I'm done, the fish should come back. Thank you. Actually, right. how much work do you still have left, Remini? Maybe we could lend you a hand. Uh, so I guess no fishing for, for this week. But I can't trouble you any more than I already have. Hey, it's no trouble at all! Didn't you just call us your trustworthy companions? Companions are all about helping each other, you know? But... Don't you need to report back to your commissioner? No, nope, that's not how it works. See, Paimon's got these commissioner types all figured out. <laughs> even though we were just tasked with finding out why the fish had gone missing. If we tell them now that it was all just a misunderstanding, you can bet they'd just immediately hand us another commission to help them get the fish back. <laughs> exactly! So if we can help you finish up your work and get the fish back, that would save us an extra trip! Um... Is that what you'd like to do as well? Huh. Alright, I'll trust your judgment. Please, follow me. I've made a makeshift camp over there. Okay, since we have Remini. Hmm. Well, I've got. Not really yeah. built much though. I've stored Thelxy in the tent. Oh, there he it is. He <laughs> can respond to some simple verbal commands. You can try calling his name and see if he'll come over. Whoa, sounds pretty advanced. Let Pilo give it a try. Hey, Thelxy, uh, are you there? <laughs> that's cute. So that's Fermanet's version of Thelxy. It's also penguin shaped, just like Pear. Yep. Had Delxy lived uh, the in Penguin Town, is, he'd uh, probably has. have become great friends with Pear. Or Sudden as a Pear. Uh, it's not really anywhere famous or important. Don't worry about it. Hey, Delxy. Nice to meet you. Do you know how to say hello? Just in quote. I wanted to install a language mm. output module, <laughs> language but output due to time constraints, I had to give up on the idea. As it stands, Thelxy can only output messages that were pre-written into its motherboard. I haven't given him the ability to convert those messages into discernible words, so he can't really talk to us just yet. You want us to help you complete and install this language module, right? Uh, no, no, you didn't say that. There's no need. <laughs> that wasn't one of my employer's requests. Oh, you want to try It was just that. something I okay. wanted to try. I have two other things I'd like your help with. The first is to yeah, do some integration yeah. testing on Thelxy's motherboard to make sure he will be able to function properly in most situations. That it's probably doesn't the event, then. sound too hard. And what's the other thing? The other shouldn't take too long either. You'll need to also find Thelxy some like colorful you. shells and coral, so I can craft a weapon for him. Craft a weapon? A weapon? Will Thelxy have to fight? Mm hmm Thelxy will need to be able to charge forward with a weapon in hand. Like that brave prince of legend. It's a part of my employer's request. What an imaginative employer! Naming Thelxy after a water imp, but wanting him to look like a prince? Well, regardless of his role or species, Thelxy's purpose is the same. Just like Pear, 
He has come to this world to serve as somebody's companion. Hmm. Whoa! Bugsy just said something again! Could he understand what we were just talking about? He can react to certain key words, but unfortunately, due to the lack of a translation module, he still can't quite communicate with us. That's a pity. But anyway, the most important thing right now is for us to get to work. Maybe let's start by doing some testing on the... motherboard. That sounds like something we can do here in the camp. Sounds good. The motherboard is on my workbench, so please follow me. Alright then. Okay, we don't have to walk. <laughs> it's right here anyway. Ah, here we go. I have this testing manual. So feel free to reference it if you get stuck. Want to give it a try? Sure. It's okay if you don't succeed immediately. I've got a lot this of backup boards just in case. Thing. Okay. Knowing you, I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out. So are we doing it one right now? Test the motherboard. Please give the testing a try. The motherboard's on the table there. Alright then. Debug motherboard. Literally the event. Okay, left click and drag to assemble the circuit. So just... What? Right click to the... Oh, okay. Right click to the deep. Uh, press to begin operations. Equip. It's supposed to go here, right? Can you rotate or something? No. How are you supposed to go here? Oh! Wait. Is there a way to turn? Does that work? <laughs> no, it's not connected. So how do you change the direction here? Is there another button? to switch ah okay now it works all right understand them now understand it <laughs> that's a simple one <sighs> you're doing well just as I expected. Okay, that's just for event. We've taken on a lot of similar tasks before, you know. Then let's move on to the underwater part. It's just as I mentioned earlier. We're after colorful shells and coral. Oh, speaking of which, you're both already pretty used to Fontaine's underwater environment, right? Okay, that's good. Just let me know if you ever feel uncomfortable. I'll make sure to stay right by your side. And the water is fine, we have new Valette and Fury now. <laughs> Stop that, Delcy. <laughs> Delcy development law. One to perform convenience. Okay. Third one right here. So, wait, where are we going? Hmm... Alright, we have to go from here then. Hmm, that's 
saw the Kingsville. Alright, anyway. with our search. This is it. We call this thing an echoing conch. It can detect special reflection beast. waves in the water to help us with all kinds of underwater exploration and excavation efforts. Here, try it. Did you notice any interesting places? Okay. It's, the echoing it's, conch it's detected already. some just now. Let's go check them out. It's quite shy. Okay. What was it? Glitch. And there's another one here. And here. <sighs> Alright, these should be enough. Let's head back to camp. Uh, thank you for staying out here with me all this time. <laughs> Let's see, then, uh, yeah, please. What the? There we go. I saw the hydrophilus. Alright, uh, let's get out of here before we damage. Okay, so we can just teleport here. Nice. Oh, this the person? Zuria Destri. <laughs> ah, Fremine, you're back. I thought you might have been out diving. I'm sorry, Madame Destre. I must have kept you waiting. I can report, though, that the construction of Thelxi is going quite smoothly. There's no rush. I'm your employer, not your supervisor. And these two are... Oh, uh, they're two of my trustworthy companions. They're here to help me work on Thelxi. Yes, I see. I suppose it's only natural for someone responsible like you to have some reliable friends. It's really nice to meet you, Madam Distre. Are you from Destry. an employer? Paimon is Paimon and this is the Traveler. Greetings, my new friends. Just call me Zoria. You are both so adorable. The sight of you reminds me of little fairies under a cottage roof. Oh, do you really think so? Of course. If my child had friends like you, then perhaps he wouldn't have become so obsessed with the tales of water imps. And I wouldn't have had to trouble Fremine here with this commission. Obsessed with the tales of water imps? Ah, oh, so you don't know anything about my request yet? I would have thought Fremine had explained it to you already. Well, Fremine told us that it was a private matter, so he didn't want to just share it willy-nilly. I see. <laughs> so Monsieur Fremine is even more discreet than I had thought. Hmm. As you are assisting him with the project, I believe it'll be beneficial for you to learn more about its vision and history. But it would be quite impolite of me to simply pile all of my troubles on you without your permission. So... Would you like to listen to my story? Sure, you can tell us anything. You've already said nice things about us, so we'll try our best to help you get through your troubles. Ah, oh, what a lovely little fairy. <laughs> fairy. Let me think of a way to put my situation into words. Hmm, I'm sure you're already familiar with the tale of the water imps, right? Simply put, parents came up with a story. Painting water imps as scary abductors in an effort to convince their children to stay away from the water. My child is rather special, however. While most other children are terrified of Thelxie, he's infatuated with him. In... infatuated? With a water imp? What a brave soul. Yes. He told me that he thought the water imp might have just been misunderstood. In his mind, Instead of singing to abduct children, 
The water imp actually sang out of a longing for companionship. He goes near the water. As a result, he often goes near the water in secret. Huh. So he wanted to become friends with the water imp so it wouldn't be lonely any longer? Hmm. What a unique way of thinking. <laughs> Thank you, little Paimon. He indeed has always stood out from the crowd. He was actually diagnosed with loneliness syndrome when he was only eight years old. Mm -hmm. It's a type of mental disorder. Those affected by it often feel extremely lonely and lose interest in many mundane activities. The syndrome is probably what made him so determined to become friends with the water imp. Oh no! Is it a very serious disorder? Mm. If you were to become afflicted with the disorder, Paimon, you would only be able to say less than a fraction of the words you're saying to the Traveler now. No! Paimon won't accept that! We would have to find a doctor to help cure Paimon! Paimon has a 2,000 word <laughs> quota for daily conversations with the Traveler and she won't settle for a single word less! The family doctor has already begun to if treat Paimon my son, this, huh? but since the disorder is rare, there aren't many good regimens for treatment. He's also developed some new symptoms lately, such as uncontrollable delusion. Huh? Uncontrollable what now? Uncontrollable delusions. To put it simply, he can no longer differentiate between fantasy and reality, and spends all his time in his fantasy world. Then... then what is he seeing in his fantasy world? It's a dream that he often mentioned to me when he was younger. I've compiled what I could understand of his recent rambling. It goes a bit like this. How it's supposed to be against He really Greek crafted a lovely fairy tale world for Thuxi. Oh, just one it's second. Like a beautiful dream. <laughs> but perhaps no beautiful dream can ever last long. You see, the story ended with a twist. So countless monsters arrive alongside. his loneliness syndrome? Well, it'd be more accurate to say that it was the syndrome that caused such terrible delusions to manifest. But in any case, the biggest problem is the patient eventually loses themselves to the fantasy world of their own creation. Fantasy world. This sounds to me like... <laughs> My poor Another child game. can no longer differentiate between imagination and reality. He's begun to see himself as Thelxie. Um, perhaps in his mind, the loneliness he felt became the same as that of a prince who lost everything he ever loved he sees or that stood he for. That what? So that's what you meant by uncontrollable delusions? Then we have to help him step out of it! Alas. Most of the time, he acts as if he can no longer sense or interact with the real world at all. I've had several discussions with the doctor, and we think it is best to try to guide his fantasy. He once wanted to make a picture book of his imaginary world, but since the disorder progressed too quickly, he never quite got past the first page of the book. If we could use this book as a breakthrough for his condition... Here, you can take a look. Ooh. Ah, so Zuri's son also saw Felxy as a penguin. Oh, he looks so sad. What we should do now is help him complete this picture book. However, we'll leave the story to a different ending. One where the water imprint is eventually able to restore his kingdom with the help of his friends. We'll need to chase away his loneliness and sorrow and let him perceive a world full of hope again. That's what I mean by guiding his fantasy. But if we just need to finish the picture book, why does Fremenay need to make 
the folk see as well. Because we need to treat the book's story seriously, as if it's a history of things that have really happened. We'll need to go on a journey like Thelxi and help him mm. regain his crown and country. But my child can no longer go on a journey of his own. This is why I commissioned uh, Fremine here to craft a Thelxi. And then I'll paint the journey with this Thelxi into the picture book. Ah, oh, like a stand-in for your son! I'm not starting to get it now! Oh, you really put a lot of thought into this, Zuria. Um, Paimon still has one question, though. Where will we be able to find a water imp kingdom? There are some ruins on the seabed of the Salacia Plains. I've already asked Fremine to research them for me. We'll be able to use one of the ruins as the kingdom. Oh, so we'll just need to act out a performance of, uh... Oh, a brave journey through the kingdom of water imps. As long as we chase away the monsters in the ruins, it'll count as chasing away the monsters in the water imp kingdom, right? Sadly, no. We won't just be putting on a performance. It's just as Zuria said. We need to take this seriously. And the only way we can take this seriously is if we choose to believe everything that's happening is real. Uh, so we'll be playing it straight? Or, uh, making it a fully immersive experience? Oh, neither of those really sound right. Uh, well, either way, we'll still be able to help, right? It's all right. There's no need to get that serious. It's not a big deal. I believe in my son. We can just see this as him wanting to stay asleep for a bit longer, because he's so enamored with his dream. <sighs> Zuria. Keep your spirits up, everyone. If we were to look troubled, my son is sure to become anxious as well. Hmm. I should be heading back right about now to check on my son. We temporarily moved to a place on the hill over there, so my son will have a better spot to convalesce. It's not far from the water, and there's also a great view. Feel free to come find okay. me if anything urgent comes up. Understood. There's also one last thing. Since these two friends were able to help me out, I've made some more progress on Thelxi. I estimate that he should be ready sometime tomorrow. That's great news. I must thank you all. Hmm. With that in mind, how about we meet here in two days' time to head to the Kingdom of Water Imps? All right, everyone. Let's meet again in another two days. I guess that's for part two. Zuria sure is a brave and optimistic lady. Fremine, do you think her plan will work out? Uh, let's discuss that over by the tent. There were a few things that I didn't bring up because the Madame was here. Madame. Okay. What is it, Fermine? What did you want to say? <clears throat> um, if you don't mind me asking, For what? I would like the two of you to mentally prepare yourselves. <sighs> this is the first time that you've met anyone with the syndrome, right? I know you two are both really strong and will do everything you can to help the child. But with the syndrome being the way it is, if things don't, if things don't quite turn out as we wish, I hope you'll be able to accept the outcome and not put too much blame on yourselves. Fremine, why do you bring this up all of a sudden? Didn't we just promise Zuria that we'll be optimistic about everything working out? It's not that I'm not optimistic. It's just... Ah, so that's why you looked like you knew exactly what she was talking about. Wait, Fremine, don't tell Paimon that you also... No, no. <laughs> okay. Please don't misunderstand. I've never had it. I've just... Oh. I've just seen many cases of it at the House of the Hearth. Back when we lived under the previous director. They say there are many factors surrounding the development of this illness. I've heard everything from hereditary factors and one state of mind to environmental factors and even leyline disorder effects. Some even say it could be caused by contamination from god remains. Oh gosh, it's those things again. <laughs> and from the cases I've seen, there weren't many positive outcomes. Uh, in the worst oh. cases, 
the patient could even pass away. What? It could get that serious? The near pylon thought they'd just stop talking as much. Hmm. <sighs> yeah, that's just the nature of it. So if you'll find it difficult to cope with the worst case scenario, I would prefer that you back out right now. I don't want you to help only to feel like you failed. Yeah, that's right. Pilot's seen all of those things too. No matter how hard it might get, we won't be scared. Really? Huh. Then in that case, let's see this real life fantasy adventure together to the end. Yeah! Paimon has a question. If this illness can really be as bad as you've described, then do you really think Zuria's method will be able to help? After all, we'll just be using a toy as Delxi and some ruins as the Kingdom of Waterimps. The whole adventure will only be turned into a picture book for her son to read. Well, I think it should be able to do something. To harbor a fantasy means that the child wants to save himself somehow. The only reason he's allowed his dream kingdom to fall is because he's lost control of his heart. But if we can help him regain control and escape from the darkness, we'll be able to change his world. Like helping someone who's lost their voice be able to speak again. Oh, Paimon sees what you're saying now. Huh. How do you understand all of this so well, Fremine? Hmm. Maybe because I have also had many of my own dreams in the past. Penguin I even image. had my own fairy tale world, much like oh. that boy's. I was able to draw a lot of support from it. So I believe in the power of fantasy worlds. Ah, so you remembered. What Penguin Town? Why does a Paimon remember? Damn, Paimon. Is it also a fairy tale world? Don't leave Paimon in the dark! <clears throat> it's just one of my personal quirks. I need to hide himself. Please pay it no mind. <laughs> anyway, All right. Penguin Town is a peaceful place with lots of penguin residents. They're all really good at making clockwork toys, and Pear is the town's triumphant hero, as well as the one who quietly protects the whole place. Pear? Well, I often think that Pear only came to me because he realized how much I needed him. So it's not so much that I made Pear, as Pear chose me as his friend. Uh, Fremine, are you sure you're not losing control of your fantasies as well? No, I don't think so. I can still differentiate between fantasy uh. and reality. I just believe that the fairy tale world of my dreams must also exist somewhere. It might just be hidden, which is why it's difficult to see. Or it will only reveal itself at very specific times. Specific times? Like when you put on your diving helmet? Yeah. That's the general idea of it. Really? I would just said that because you put on your helmet. Have you ever observed the surface world from underwater? It's as if you're viewing a whole different world from the outside. It's a very surreal feeling. Both alienating, but also as if you're being protected by something. I have a similar feeling when I put on my diving helmet. In those moments, it's possible to see some truly wondrous things. As if a fairy tale has become reality. It's almost like a sort of miracle. Really? Like a miracle? <laughs> well, if that's in order. Wait, really? I'm just kidding. Yeah, that's in order. It, uh, just kidding though, but... Hey! Now's not the time! <laughs> Fremini still has Delcy's weapon to make. We don't want to bother him yet! Right. I still have to collect some tools I'll need to uh, craft the weapon. I'd like to see the traveler I've using the, the helmet. I've everything before tomorrow. Thank you for reminding me, Paimon. I'm sure there'll be other opportunities for you to try my helmet. Thanks for all of your help. I'll be off for now. Let's meet up here again in two days. Alright, so that's the end of part one. Okay.
Well, not really two days. Tomorrow I can probably play the second one. Oh, what? No, I need a translation for the codes. Okay, this is the event. Complete the buggy on oh, that's the motherboard. Okay, this is the motherboard one. So the collecting the thing just now. Yeah, the echoing crunch again, okay. And this tomorrow, okay. So that's the event, huh? So this one, uh, yeah, I think you get a furnishing? Yeah, it's a furnishing of Dark Sea, probably. It's the event. This is the story, yeah, so there's three parts, okay. Alright, interesting. So, okay. So... Dark Sea is a uh, penguin in the story, the water in story. Okay. Interesting. Alright. So that's the. I thought it was uh, another penguin by him, by Framini. <laughs> that's it for this uh, part one of the Dark Sea penguin event. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time. Okay guys, I'm back in Genshin Impact. Uh, Paimon already said it. It's time for part 2. Back to Fremine's camp. So let's continue this Fremine event stuff. Oh, why am I using this thing? Hold on. stuck now okay there we go all right anyway part two of the Fremine event I did forgot the penguin name already <laughs> Oh, family is talking to Zuria. Okay. Uh, is your child feeling any better? Thank you for your concern, Femine. His condition is fairly stable. The family doctor said we might be able to take him out for a stroll today. Zuria, Femine, we're here! <laughs> Seems like everyone's arrived now. Not quite. Aren't we missing someone? But Paimon has a guess where he might be. Hey, Delcy! Ah, Delcy. Okay. Hey. <laughs> oh, he has a weapon now. <laughs> and a shield. Okay, it seems this thing is... Uh, what I heard, uh, it's, it's actually Morse code with something. Whoa! Delcy's got himself a sword and a shield now! He's looking <laughs> sharp! Indeed. With his weapons in hand, Thalxy looks more formidable than ever. You've really outdone yourself, Remine. We all kill! Yes, you really had a good eye for materials. Mm -hmm. Everything you found was high quality. Speaking of which, Zuria just told me that she wants to end the adventure with the coronation ceremony. Coronation ceremony? So, uh, could I also trouble you with finding some materials oh, for the crown? You can just keep an eye out for them on our way to the ruins. I was planning to collect the materials myself, but then I realized you might be able to find some prettier ones than what I could get my hands All on. Alright, consider it done. Seems like everything's ready to go. Shall we head out? 
Please wait a moment. Hmm? I was just thinking. Since Thalxi has already shown us his brand new appearance, we may already be able to draw a new page in the picture book. Good idea. What do you think? Ooh, Pyrex excited now! Hmm. Why don't we use the story we know as a reference? Just to make the atmosphere a bit less grim. So we'll take out the sad parts and replace them with happier stuff? Sounds great to Pyrex! Alright, I'll give it a try. I'm not very adept at drawing. But I've seen a lot of art during my work. Now, as far as the actual content of the drawing, please tell me what you'd like to see. Let me think. Oh, this is the event picture. We can draw the weapon. The prince has picked up the Sword of Courage and the Shield of Perseverance, which proves he has crossed the mire of doubt and now is ready to wage war against the darkness. Okay, I'll add the weapons. Anything uh... else? Paimo wants to give him some friends. Thelxie's like got some friends by his side now, so he's no longer fighting alone. Okay, I'll also draw some companions. Oh, that's cute. Anything else? Don't forget to add some color. Oh, color. Ah, oh, color, yes, that's really important. The road in front of him now will no longer be just grayscale, but bursting with color and hope. Who would have thought the page could have become so inspiring? How wonderful! <laughs> Splendid ideas, everyone! Great! Everyone looks super pumped up! Thelxie, most of all! Are you seeing this, my son? Are you feeling inspired by this as well? Oh, look at Thelxie. I'm not gonna translate that. I'm I'll sure he is, Zuria. The translation and this is still just the first page. It. This is just the first page. That's can't wait to see the picture book when it's all finished! We should finish it as soon as possible and keep up the belief and hope in our hearts! Mm-hmm. I'm starting to look forward to it as well. So let's get the show on the road and head towards the Kingdom of Water Imps! Yay! Thelsie's fantastic adventures begin now! Alright, part two. And they're not doing this for events or so. <laughs> Showing the part 1, part 2 during the dialogue, not just when <laughs> the dialogue is over. Okay, head towards the kingdom of water is. Alright, just follow. Might as well do that. <laughs> oh. Those are materials that we can use for the crown, right? Let's get some for Fremine. What is it? Inscribe shell. Third one. Oh, some help. These should be enough. I knew you'd have a knack for finding the best materials. We shouldn't need anything else to head to the Kingdom of Water Imps. Oh, Whoa. it's underwater. Is that the entrance to the underwater ruins ahead? Are we actually doing the domain underwater? Okay, it's a domain underwater. Wait, what? Oh, it is part of the event. Okay, it's not just a domain. Assistant, that's okay. Interesting. Um, we have a geo monster. We have this hydro. Okay, so we're not we're not just fighting underwater, we're fighting normally. Mm, in that case I'll bring traveler and family as well. Uh. So 
want it to be too easy. Unless there's a time limit or something, then I might have to change. I should be fine. Ooh. So these are the underwater ruins that from This is found. the previous event. They're pretty amazing, but still Bruh. not exactly the kind that Paimon was imagining. It's literally the previous event's domain. Actually, see a fairy tale world, like with the water imp's colorful houses and the rainbow bridge. I'm sorry. I was hoping to put up some decorations, but ran out of time to do it by myself. Whoa! Someone's already switched into <laughs> fantasy mode. Seems like the travelers already got the gist of things. You should do your best too, Paimon. Uh, don't underestimate Paimon. Paimon can flip the switch too. No. <laughs> Young adventurers, tis Paimon, guardian goddess of this land. State your goals and intentions for visiting this nation. Uh, <laughs> we are the companions of Prince Thalxi, your divine highness. We have come to help him reclaim the glory that he has lost. Reclaiming your glory? Thy goddess here has golden glory, silver glory, and bronze glory. What? Which is it that the prince has lost? Huh? What? <sighs> Not at all! This is the goddess's test! <clears throat> From your responses, the goddess has concluded that you're all brave adventurers without the taint of greed in your hearts. As such, you are worthy of everyone's respect. So please accept the goddess's reward. The goddess will now bestow all three types of glory upon you. And as for this prince, the goddess will also bestow upon you the rainbow glory. So your future will always be filled with light. <laughs> Question mark. My gratitude to your Divine Highness for such generous blessings. Power is now surging through every part of my body. Uh, me... Me too. Is this the Divine Inspiration Goddess of Legend? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Ahem. Now, adventurers, oh? forge bravely ahead and defeat the monsters that have taken over the kingdom. You will be sure to find that which you seek all right let's go use prince tech tell sees water imps chance to defeat opponents more easily tell see must charge up before being able to use it this again after using okay might as well use straight away please be careful brave adventures just ahead for some easy enemies that have been facing the kingdom of Really chills of the deep. Those incursive enemies are back again. Your Highness, please show them what you're made of. Oh, Femir is a trial character. I just realized. Ah, I shouldn't use Femir then. I didn't know it would be a trial character. So this is a, wait, this is a level 88 family name. Royal Greatsword and C3. Okay, better than mine. We're under attack again. It's a law with you of the deep. There's no need to fear, my friends. His Bruh. highness is so strong now <laughs> that even a divinity of the deep would pose no threat to him. Okay. <laughs> it's finally over. So have we defeated the evil monsters and reclaimed the kingdom of water? Yes. 
It should now be time for us to attend Thuxi's coronation ceremony. The only thing is, I didn't expect this to go so smoothly. I thought it would have taken longer for us to reach the heart of the ruin. It was my mistake. I should have told Fremen earlier that we would also need a crown. It's all because the Traveler and Goddess Paimon were too strong! We just eradicated all the monsters in one go! It's okay, Zaria. We can come back again once I've made the crown. Then I must thank all of you again for taking the time. And you too, Thuxi, my child. Aww. Thuxi's turning out to be a real expert at fighting! I don't think there's anything that will be able to stop him. He's like a true prince now. Yes, I agree as well. Let's head back to camp for now. I asked the Traveler to search for some materials on the way, because I want to make the crown as soon as possible. We can add an update to Thuxi's fantastic adventures as well! Now that we've reclaimed the Kingdom of Water Imps, it's time for us to draw some new scenes in the picture book! Okay. <laughs> Let me see someone draw goddess Paimon. Triple D goddess. I thought goddess was just double D. Hey, you didn't have to see it out loud. <laughs> no problem. I'm happy to oblige. Then in that case, the story today should go something like this. After overcoming many obstacles, Prince Thalxi and his brave companions finally arrived at the entrance to the Kingdom of Water Imps. At this time, the little fairy in the group, Paimon, revealed her true goddess form to her <laughs> companions. <laughs> true goddess form. The goddess has arrived! She praised the companions for their purity, and to reward them, she bestowed upon them many blessings! and even prayed that the prince would be able to fulfill his goal! Bathed under the goddess's glory, the prince and his companions charged into the bastion of evil, chased away the monsters, and rescued the pretty water imps from their imprisonment. The prince finally managed to reclaim his kingdom. But as for the crown... Oh no! The crown isn't ready yet! No. The crown was within the prince's reach. But the monsters took it with them as they fled. They haven't given up and are sure to return. But the prince is certain to reclaim the crown the next time they fight. The brilliant rainbow shall descend onto the kingdom once more. Oh, and Paimon can almost see it all happening now! Whoa! The pages are beautiful! Zuria is really talented at drawing! Thank you, everyone. We've also completed the second page of the picture book now. Nice. Thalxi's journey is one step closer to its end, and the promised coronation. My child, you'll also be able to brighten up when that time comes, right? Huh. I'm sure he will, Zuria. Who knows? Perhaps the doctor will already have some good news for you when you get back home today. I sure hope so, your Divine Highness. <laughs> oh, Fremine, about the time you'll need for the crown. Please don't worry. One day should be more than enough. Ah, then I must thank you for your hard work. All right, Already? let's rendezvous here in another two days' time for our final adventure. Is that the end of okay? the second part? And see you in two days, my lovely friends. I'm pretty sure there's more in there. I'll need to, to go to the city Dallas. shortly to get some parts for the base of the crown. I want to try out a few different designs and choose the one that looks the best. Yeah, Paimon knew that you didn't often take commissions from others, but Paimon had no idea you'd be so dedicated once you're on the job. Ah, uh, well, about that, it might be because... Uh, because what? It's because... I hope... Uh, what's the matter? And what's with that 
look on your face. You're turning red. And it looks like you're about to run away and put your helmet on again. Uh, am I turning red? <laughs> all right, all right. We won't bother you anymore for today, Fratmane. Let's see each other in two days' time. That'll do soon. Come on. Okay. Thank you. See you in two days. That's it? A part two? That's the shortest... Uh, shortest part two ever. <laughs> I hope that everyone who found themselves in a dark place Aww. would be able to see something beautiful and experience a miracle for themselves. Yeah, it is. Alright. Okay. I'm glad they made it short for the second one so I don't have to make this too long and then another event is open so this is the battle one I guess so I've got a lot eh? alright Yes, for nice. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, this is a short one <laughs> compared to the first one. Right, so that's it for part two. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys in two days' time, probably. Okay, guys, so I'm back in Genshin Impact again. This is the third part for the Fremini event. Just don't interrupt me. Okay, that should be all the images we need. Today's the final day of Melzi's fantastic adventures. Let's go find Fremenay at his camp. Let's head back and check with Lapine Pauline. Maybe she'll have an update for us. Okay, before that. might be long this time and we get something here let's see <laughs> hey. That's cute. <laughs> hey, Fremenade! Foxy! We're here! Hello, Paimon. Hello, Traveler. Is the crown ready? Yes. We're just waiting for Zarya now. She hasn't arrived yet. Anyway, didn't she say she just lives on the hill over there? Hey, traveler, I'm on. Oh, never mind. Oh, and speaking of, found you two at long last. Oh, it's Della Roche. Oh, I'm so glad that you both are all right. The fisher uh, <laughs> that having trouble with fishing. Huh? Why are you here, Miss Della Roche? And what could have happened to us? What could have happened? That water imp Thelxie, of course. After I gave you that commission the other day, I began to get worried and went asking about the boy that went missing. Oh, that? We got it all figured out now. The boy you heard about was just Fremine. <laughs> Even the missing fish was his fault. Don't worry, we'll help you get the fish back as soon as we're done with this job. Oh, sorry about that. I've been diving in the area recently. Huh? Fremine diving? No, 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 that's not what happened at all. I've heard a completely different account. Huh? What I was told is that about a month ago, a child tied a bunch of heavy seashells onto his body and walked into this open stretch of water. He never came back. 
What could that be if not that water imp's work? That's a different story? Uh... Are... Uh, are you sure? One hundred percent sure. I've confirmed the account with several veteran fishermen I know. The child was only eight years old. His name was Lesko. Lesko Destray. So, is the boy not... Is the boy already... Wait, let's go destroy? Yeah, that's the son of the mother. Yeah, that's the name. They say the family took on the name after moving to the city from a place called Stray. Anyway, his mother is a pretty famous art dealer, while his father passed away from an accident many years ago. The mother is where we met. Uh, well, naturally, his mother was devastated by the incident and fell terribly ill. It's said that she left the court of Fontaine. She's there. No one knows where she's gone. Oh. So the son actually already... It... It, it sure, can't be, right? Mm -hmm. Lesko Destre? Zuria Destre? It, it, it must be some sort of a coincidence? I'm sorry, miss. We've got to go check on something right now. Oh, I see. Well, you go on ahead. I just came to make sure that you're both all right. I'll head back then. Uh, please remember to take care. Now it makes some sense now. And it keeps talking about the sun. And all. It was... Ah, oh, we need to go up there now. Okay, what a twist. I did not expect this. Oh, it's right near the, the tree here. Here who needs quiet bed rest. Please leave us be unless you have a meal or to report. This is the residence of Zuria Destree, and I am Jala Khan, her family doctor. Uh, what did you mean by your question just now? Who else could be my patient? So, Zuria. Your patient should be Zuria's son, right? Or Zuria herself. She told us herself that her son had contracted loneliness syndrome. No, you're right. Young Master Lesko did have that illness once upon a time, but he's... Well, the young master's no longer with us. And now the madame has come down same with the same illness. illness. Are you her friends by any chance? The wonder... So, when she had requested time to go out over the past few days, it was so she could spend them with you. So, if I'm understanding this right, the one who's suffering from uncontrollable delusions is the madame herself? She believes her son is still alive? Dad. That is correct. When the young master... I disappeared. Was weird. She was organizing an art exhibit that she had specifically prepared for him. But since she had to leave the house, she was unable to see her son one last time. That might have been the trigger for her regret. Or perhaps the family's fall into loneliness and grief was inevitable as soon as the old master passed away. First the son, and then the mother. Her smile was so lovely, and she even told us to stay optimistic. But you're saying she... Those actions are proof that she can no longer differentiate between fantasy and reality. Then, all the other things that she told us about her son, were those fake too? No, those were all real. Although, they were all things that happened before the young master left us for good. 
Madame's time has just never moved forward since his passing. I see. So after her son left, she created a fantasy world where her son was still with her. She was looking for a way to cure his illness when she ran into us. She has been in a good mood the past few days, yeah, even humming something. a song when she returned from her stroll. She even began discussing with me the idea of using deliberate guidance to ease the illness. It was all going well. Until last night. She spent a whole night staring at the shell the young master left behind. And the words that he had inscribed onto it. Then um. she broke down once more. I prescribed some sedatives and... She's currently resting. But, but then what should we do? How can we help her? There has to be something we can do! Don't panic, Paimon. Even though this is a devastating piece of news, we must all calm down first. What should we do? I need to think. I need to remember the old house of the hearth, and the children who lived in it. Those patients. And what their doctor said back then. Hmm. The doctor said that. Ah, uh, what if, Doctor Jalacon? Have you seen a picture book? The Madame should have brought it back with her. Hmm. Are you thinking about trying the guidance therapy she talked to me about before? Hmm. It's worth a shot. I'll go get the book. Okay. Yes. This is it. That's right. If what Dr. Jalacon said was true, the past few days have been very helpful to Zuria. So we should complete this journey. We need to show her that her child has found a happy ending in the world of her dreams. But... But wouldn't that just make it harder for her to accept reality? One must first face reality before accepting it. The Madame has been crushed by her feelings of grief and can no longer bring herself to face reality. Our first priority would be to get her out of this state. Right. Before today, I had thought she wanted to use Thelxie's fantastic adventures to save her son. But now, I think she might need it to save herself. And if we could complete it, we should be able to give her some feeling of inspiration and closure. Maybe those feelings would be enough to give her some courage to face reality again. There's no time to waste. Let's set off right away. Go back there. Doesn't really matter who, but I think we will get Framine again, right? So we don't need Framine. Maybe I'll add... Please don't be so down and gloomy. Remember what she told us? 
If we were to feel troubled, the patient would become anxious as well. <sighs> You're right. Paima makes the smile. If we have to give something to Zuria, it should be our smiles. We have to keep smiling as we finish this adventure. And then she'll be able to recover, right everyone? Yeah, I'm sure she will. Yes, we have a family. Be careful, brave adventurers. Here come the evil monsters that stole the crown. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I have to go. I made a promise to my friends and I'm already very late. But Madame, you're still... Don't try to stop me. Today's the most important day for treating Thelpsy. We'll use the guidance method. Didn't you also say that you'd think it'd work? I'm not trying to stop you, madame. It's just... <sighs> could you tell me the name of your child? Dr. Jalakan, how can you forget the name of your own patient? Uh... His name is Thalxi. He's the prince of the kingdom of water imps. We will go today to reclaim his crown and attend his coronation ceremony. I see. Madame... Please rest assured, everything is still on schedule. Your friends have already departed to find... Wait, look, they've already returned. Zuria! Zuria! We've retrieved the crown! Oh, Paimon, everyone, have you really? Yes, but the coronation ceremony still hasn't taken place, because we felt like you should be the one to preside over it. Wonderful, how wonderful! Thelxi, my child, my child, are you hearing this? Everything you lost will now come back to you, and soon, very soon, you will never be lonely again. Uh, I want to know what Thelxi is saying. Then. And the last page of the picture book. It's still waiting for you to illustrate in color. Right, the picture book, the picture book. But I don't know what I should put on the last page. Don't worry, Thilksy and his friends all know what you go on it. Get ready, Zuria. We'll describe everything for you. Okay, okay. <clears throat> At last, Thilksy and his friends were able to drive off the final invading monsters and achieve a dashing victory. Their success was complete, and the recovered crown resplendent. The water imps. Finally returning to their homes, showered the prince with love and applause as he greeted them. They once again offered their precious shells to the prince and reconstructed the rainbow bridge of old. As he watched the scene unfold, the prince could not help but be touched by its beauty. Moved by everyone's happiness, the prince stepped onto the rainbow bridge and took a good look at all the friends who had gone on the journey with him. There stood the traveler, Goddess Paimon, <laughs> Fremenae, and... Huh? Where's the last person? The prince looked frantically around, but could not find the person he wanted to see most. At that moment, the person suddenly appeared on the other side of the bridge. 
she walked towards him with a smile and slowly lifted her veil. The prince could not hold back his tears. He recognized then that the mysterious person that had been by his side the whole time was none other than his mother. Surya walked across the bridge and placed the crown above the prince's head. She smiled down upon him as she said, My prince, my king, you shall never, ever need to feel lonely again. That's the end of the story, Zarya. Thank you. Thank you all. I am so sorry, my child. Maman should have spent more time with you. Did you hear the story? Oops. You'll never have to feel lonely <laughs> I've got the North notifications. Oops. <laughs> ah, what does does what does Toxy say? I need to see the context of this. It's saying something. <laughs> My mom loves you too. Look, what's happening? Is Zuri talking yeah, to Yeah, what Delta? is Delta saying? Quick, put on my diving helmet. There's a transcription module in it that's compatible with Delxi's output signals. You should be able to use it to understand what Delxi's saying. Wait, we can put the diving helmet? Okay, that's a transcription module. Are we gonna see us wearing the helmet? That's the same line. What does it say? It's repeating. Ah. And she understood that. Mama, Mama loves you too. But I love you ah. more, Mama. What is this? Last card. What? Did you see something? You see last card, we actually see the sun. Maman, I'm getting a little sleepy. If it's time for bed, can you hum a lullaby to me again? Of course, my dearest child. As long as you want to hear it, Mama will always hum for you. Thank you, Mamon. Your lullaby has always been my favorite. Now that I've heard it, I can return to my dream and to the kingdom of water imps in peace. My poor darling. Please don't forget. I will always love you. My love is greater than the entire distance between here and the kingdom of water imps. I won't forget my mom. And so is my love for you. Greater than the entire distance between here and the kingdom of water imps. Good night, my mom. Three days later. Traveler, Paimon, you're here. Friday! Why did you call us in such a hurry? Did you hear something from Zuria? Oh, if it's not good news, Paimon doesn't want to hear it. Don't worry, it's definitely great news. The Madame came here for a visit just now with her doctor. Color has returned to her cheeks, and she sounded full of energy as well. She said she'd like to return to the court to continue hosting the art exhibit. But this time, 
She'll work with her doctor to exhibit some picture books related to the illness. Of course, they'll see fantastic adventures, and the guidance therapy will be included in the exhibit as well. She'd like to use her experience to help others. Mm-hmm. Here, please take this picture book with you. The so Madame wants you to have it. That we get. If at some point in the future you were to run into someone with similar troubles, she hopes the book would be of use to you. Uh, but this is her son's story, right? Is it really okay to give the book to us? Don't worry, it's just a copy. She still has the original. It's extremely important to her. It feels good knowing we've contributed to something important. Paimon definitely didn't expect the fantasy adventure to be so useful. Paimon was a little worried about how everything would turn out. After all, fantasy is just fantasy. Paimon, do you know what the Madame said? She said that at the moment when she placed the crown on Thilxie's head, she felt like she really saw something beautiful. Her child had returned, and he told her that he loved her. She also said that was when she was finally able to bid farewell to her son. Mm -hmm. She felt like at that moment, she was healed by some mystical power, and she was filled with courage from head to toe. Oh, really? But could that hmm. just be another part of her fantasy? Perhaps. But if fantasy is just fantasy, and the fantasy world is not real, then how could it still grant us these powers that we can continue to use in the real world? But, but what else can it be? A descent of the fairy tale world into the real world. At that time, the wondrous fairy tale temporarily became reality and influenced real things in our world. That has to be what happened. You saw it too. Didn't you? But that can't be what happened, right? There's just no way. Wouldn't it be like a miracle if that really happened? Yes. I suppose that would be a miracle. I hope that everyone who's found themselves in a dark place would be able to see something beautiful and experience a miracle for themselves. Oh. That's the end. So we have the picture book. Tuxi's Fantastic Adventures. So that's it, huh? There's also one more thing. Water imprints. Finally shown what this is. It's a furnishing, right? Yep. So there's one more. Okay, never mind. I'll do that later. Alright, so that's it for the event. The story of Toxy as well. Okay, I had a feeling this won't be long, and the second day was very short, <laughs> so I think I'll edit this and make it into one video lah, instead of making it three videos. So wait, uh, Fremini isn't here, is anyone at the house? Oh yeah, the shell. Mm. That was it. Let me uh, go into the teapot for this. Let me create the furnishing. Oh, 
No, it's not a blueprint. It's already. It's already made. So I can just place it now. This round. If you ever. Let's see. Can I place inside? Oh, it has to be outside. Is it here? A uh, small furnishing. Large furnishing? I don't think so. It's a small it's ornament. No. So it has to be outside then. It's a furnishing, right? So no. Where is it? Ah, there it is. Okay, it's landscape. Ah, for f uh, let me remove something. Okay, maybe not here. There's too much things in my teapot. <laughs> okay, it works. So I'll put it right here. <laughs> Temporary up here. Oh, I can't talk to Darcy. <laughs> okay, yeah, I can't talk to him. Uh. Alright, so that's it then. Okay, so I think that's it for this video. That's Seas Adventures Part 3. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time.